the last thing you want to happen when you're on holiday is electrocute your family, burn down the hotel room, or even worse, stop your wife's hairdryer from working. But that's exactly what can happen if the hotel you're staying in has universal socket outlets. So to understand more about these sockets and the safety issues, I thought I'd best buy some, which meant I had to head down to the local market, where amongst the fruit, the vegetables, loads of quantities of shirts and general holiday knickknacks, I strayed across the hardware stall. And on this stall, we can find a fascinating selection of electrical items from those ever popular multi plugs through to socket outlets, USB leads, and even a Nike hat. Sadly, they didn't have the socket outlets I was looking for, and actually looking around, it seems like they didn't even care about using sockets and plugs at all. So I had to head off down to the DIY store. Inside all good DIY stores, there's always a fascinating range of MCBs and consumer units for the DIY professional. And eventually, alongside an extensive range of wiring accessories, I found the universal socket outlets I was looking for. Well, from the state of those Bermuda shorts, it doesn't look as if you took the family to Scrappy for their summer holiday. So where would I find the universal socket outlet? So that was the island of Mauritius, Gary, which is an interesting place. If you, if you look back in history, it used to be a French colony. And then uh, the British uh, relieved them of their obligations and became part of the British Empire and heavily influenced by India. Right. So now you bring these three cultures together. What could possibly go wrong when you take a French socket outlet, an English socket outlet, and yeah, decide that you want to follow your, plow your own thorough, should we say. And you know, hotels, it's a big tourist destination. I've obviously decided when you're welcoming people from all over the world, you know, travel adapters are a bit of a nightmare, aren't they, really? So let's just get rid of the travel adapters, make life easy for everyone, go for the universal socket. And we tried something similar in Europe, didn't we, where we tried to standardise the socket outlet. And we know that the British 3-pin one should have been the socket outlet of choice. And I think that was the main reason we exited the European Union, yeah, wasn't it? Not, not a lot of people realised that. They thought it was all this immigration and freedom of movement. It was, going, no, we didn't want to adopt the British socket, which is fantastic, really well engineered. Lots of great safety features in there, apart from one thing, if you ever stand on one of those plugs in the middle of the night, it is an excruciatingly painful process. And it's because it's the only one that will lay pins up compared to maybe its European and American counterparts. Yeah, so Universal Sock Outlets have been around for a while actually, and you'll, you'll see that I first saw them in China, probably going back 20 years ago. It was, you know, the Chinese, quite enterprising, they always like to, to solve problems. Um, however, your problems occur when you try and adopt different electrical safety standards and put them in because every country's socket has its own safety features. But when you start mixing together, that creates the problem. My well, first issue is the prevention of electric shock. How are they going to do that? Uh, well, we've got to understand the problem first. So you take a French plug uh, or a German plug. They're normally used to sort of going into a hole in the wall. So okay. Their sockets are slightly recessed. But when you try and introduce them into what essentially is a modified British socket, you can have those exposed pins. So if we pick a small child's finger, which uh, I've replicated here with, uh, with a pencil, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and plug in an appliance, you can see it's possible to keep the appliance uh, completely powered and working and still have room to fit in uh, a pencil or what could be a small child's finger. Okay, that's obviously not acceptable, but it is with the universal socket outlet in order that we can receive that electric shock. And that would pace through again for the American one, wouldn't it? It would, yeah. I mean, yeah, obviously we know American plugs are made like chewing gum. Um, but the, in this case, the, hot, the hairdryer supplied by the hotel had the French plug on it. Wow, so they introduced the risk of electric shock by handing you the appliance anyhow. By handing the appliance, and obviously, when you're going to be using that appliance, when you've got wet hair. So if you've got wet hair, you may have wet hands. Wet hands. Okay, so with that in mind, then, let's think about that earth pin. Mm -hmm. Okay, and whether it is needed or not, how's that going to work maybe with a French style one where we haven't got that connection to earth? Maybe you've got a class one equipment. You know me, Gary. I go on holiday, I like to take, uh, have a look at the local electrics. So I'm always armed with the Swiss Army knife. And uh, so take the Hotel Iron, for instance. Now, I did not realise until going on holiday that Black & Decker were so big in the uh, ironing department. I didn't realise you could get a Black & Decker iron, but apparently you can. I don't know if it's an original uh, or not, uh, but can't see on this appliance whether it's class one or class two. Can't see that double insulated symbol. Um, so I thought I'd best take the plug off. 
Okay, and when you did reveal the plug, there was a connection to Earth, but that connection to Earth wasn't replicated by the universal socket coming through, was it? Yeah, so that again is the problem. Now, if you look at a French, a French plug, their earth pin sticks out from the socket yep. and goes into the plug, where the German plug has, uh, has the, the little the Schuko plug has the little tabs on the side. Um, French and German plugs tend to work together, and, and so you'll always get an earth connection. However, when you try and put that into the universal socket, there's no way of getting the earth connection. And that's not a problem that's going to be initially there, is it? Because obviously it's powered up, you've got your Black & Decker working, okay, even if it is an iron, and it's only when there is a fault that obviously to the case in that we may discover the fact that the earth connection hasn't made its way from the universal socket to the actual appliance itself. Yeah, and it's, yeah, you, you become the fault path which is uh, always, a, always an interesting situation. Again, you're on holiday, you're probably gonna be uh, you're in the hotel room next to the bathroom. You probably might not have anything on your feet. You can form a pretty effective path to earth. You'd certainly know, wouldn't you? You would know about it. And, and yeah, and again, that's a problem. You, you have these universal sockets. People can buy appliances from all over the world. And unless you're aware of these things that we all get obsessed about, you wouldn't know, would you? until it's too late. You also suggested you nearly burnt the hotel down. How did you manage that? Well, not once, Gary, nearly twice, because you come out and they say, what's that smell? It's, it's a melting plug, and I think that's down to the contacts in these sockets, which is why I thought I best pop down to the local market to, to get them. And, and a big thanks to Alex, my new dive buddy uh, in Mauritius, because he tipped me off that these Legrand ones were available at the, uh, at the DIY store. Okay, let's, let's address it now, because I'm sure you spotted it like I've just spotted it. When you were at the market, I saw a Unilight socket outlet. Why didn't we buy that? A brand we're very familiar with in yeah, the UK. Big, big brand extension. Breaking news, Unilight moving to sockets. Now I did ask if they were on sale and apparently the lady down at the store there says, no, absolutely not, which is an absolute, another first. I've never known a Unilight product not be on sale. Did you not push the old R Davis 25 to try and get a little bit of discount on them? We weren't having that either. You've been teasing it long enough. Let's take a look at one of these universal socket outlets. Okay, so I picked up two down at the DIY. So the Legrand one's the exact same one that was uh, in the hotel, but we'll uh, put that to one side because that's uh, that was that was the more expensive of the two. What I really found was this well-known brand Kefi that we've uh, we've all heard of. I'm just going on the uh, on the thing here, so it confirms to the. Uh, relevant British standard. Okay, so wow, that's got a British standard. Uh, well, there isn't one. Okay. Uh, I mean, you cannot buy these in Europe because it's impossible to uh, CE mark them or UK CA mark them. Uh, it's stylish and modern. Well, mm. Okay, we'll take a view on that one. Easy installation. Okay, so easy, and so got Wago connectors on the back? No, they've got the screws and they all point right. in different directions, Ooh. so it's possibly not as easy as it should be. Uh, high technology, perhaps that means the uh, neon indicator. And then we've got best quality safety design. Well, okay. And we've got down here superior series, which somehow suggests to do a less than superior series, and it's a noble choice. So the interesting thing, it actually comes with a 14 year guarantee. Oh yeah, that number that we always round up to with guarantees, and it 14 really years. Precise. So a quick flip on the back here. Uh, safety instruction enclosed, can't see one. Uh, this product should only be installed by an electrically competent person. Ooh, so. then let's not have the debate on competency, let's get it open. But I'd suggest if you were competent, you probably wouldn't be fitting one of these because you'd appreciate the problems. So let's have a little look. Uh, so there's the device there, we're getting close there. So these ones, actually you do find them even, this has got safety shutters, which you do need two pins to go in to open them up. You'd find versions that have actually no shutter, but again, there's no standard, so there's nobody setting about how they should operate. You can try and do this big Clive style, as you recently appeared, well, your headlight did for your Tesla on his channel, didn't it, Gordon? Yeah, well, that was good of Clive to do that. Um, let's have a little look here. So I've asked Rick, he's just drilled off the, uh, the rivets that hold the, uh, the earth bar onto the uh, fixing screws. Uh, interesting, is it 16 amps, or 250 volts AC, or is it 13 amps? Okay, well it definitely is BS1363 not that's labelled on the back of that. So whip these screws out then and prevent uh, obviously burning or cutting your fingers and all those lovely words that Clive says well, when he's unassembling stuff. This could be like literally like the coiled spring in here, you never know what you're going to get. Okay, so, so look out for flying objects I would suggest. So here we yeah. go, so we're going to lift it off. Yeah, so I'm going to suggest that put that in. Oh, there's something else on. Ah, hold on. There's a design for assembly. There's that <laughs> a little clip there. <laughs> There's another screw underneath. Ah, a little secret screw. We like a little secret screw there. So that gives the four. Oh, I can hear. I can hear something's already gone <laughs> moving its way out. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, here we go. Oh, there's the shutter gone. So there we go. It's not too bad. That was the switch elements gone. 
So there's the safety shutter, that's the first thing. So it's uh, yeah, interesting. There's our neon indicator and the switch has dropped out. So it's only single pole. Okay. Um, it's the least of its problems, I would suggest. Yeah, so here's the actual pins themselves, and we're probably more interested in these ones here. So I've taken the pin out of our 13 amp plug just so we can see what the contact looks like. So you can see if you push it in there, it is quite springy, so it does allow for uh, different contacts. But if we compare it to what we'd find in a regular 13 amp only socket, so I've taken this one here, this MK base that we've looked at before, and here's the contact there. So you can see there, just look at the difference in the contact area. Massive in it, yes. Lots of surface area connecting against that pin compared to the universal one. Yeah, and the spring sort of pushing it against that flat contact. So hopefully you've got a reasonable contact there. To be fair, I did also look at the Legrand one, uh, which actually had a spring inside it to keep a sort of slightly higher force. Um, however, before I took the cover off, I'd also managed to break it. I've somehow managed to double over um, one of the contacts there. And was that putting a 13 amp British well, plug in, was it? Could have been putting anything in, Gary. But again, even, even when I've done that, it's still possible to insert various plugs into it. Oh, wow. Was it even broken? Yeah, was it broken? So, you know, that could happen if you, I guess, yeah, people could be putting anything in there. You, you ping the spring, bend the contact over. But yeah, I think that's the problem here. Over time, these, uh, with uh, yeah, different diameter pins and shapes of pins, it forces the contacts open on this design and you get a bad contact. And then when you're using with a high current appliance. You create a load of heat and it melts the outer yeah, plastic. Yeah, you just need a little slight increase of resistance and yeah, there's our uh, sleeved pin melted. Absolutely shocking. Three reasons why that socket could be an absolute disaster. The other thing that's shocking are those legs. And I'd suggest you move on to this video about AFDDs and why they could be a great idea in hotel applications as quickly as you can.